All right, we got our table set. I just mean unprepared. We got stinger, level, angle finder. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be building a handrail for this ramp. This is my grandparents' house. We're gonna be building one handrail out of five total that we will later in the video install. My goal for this video is to help you by simplifying how to find the slope of a ramp when building a handrail for a ramp. Later in the video, I will share with you a mistake that I made while building one of the handrails and why I believe mistakes are very helpful and beneficial to us in life. Here are the measurements that I got and kind of my game plan. Five different handrails. Very basic. Since this is for my grandparents and they don't have a whole lot of money, we're, we're going very basic. In other words, no 90s, you know, I just mitered the ends versus putting in a 90. I'm not doing anything extra, you know, like this handrail isn't too code. You know, this is definitely out in the country, personal situation. We do, we do what we want out here. What's up, Karen? What up, girl? So anyway, we've got one built. The next one that I'm going to build here is the 12-footer. The best way that I know how to simplify how I got this angle, because as you can see, this is not a 90 degree angle. Since this handrail is going on a ramp, we need a slope put in these legs. And since we're pre-building this, I had to figure out my slope. So to simplify how to find your slope on a ramp in a situation like this. All right, so we'll pretend this is the ramp. Measure from one point on your ramp over 12 inches and then grab you a level Put the end of it on your mark, and of course get the bubble level, so we're level there. And then right at your 12 inch mark, see what kind of measurement you have, and it looks like got roughly two inches, so this would be considered a 212 pitch in the roofing world, or that's what pitch makes me think of as the roofing world, but so we got a 212 pitch, 212 slope. On this handrail, the actual ramp at my grandparents was a 112 pitch. Once you've done that, get you a speed square. The two things to focus on with the speed square when dealing with pitches or rise over runs or slopes, whatever you want to call it, is the pivot and the common. Make sure your pivot is right here on the corner of your situation. And then in this case, we're going to do a 12 to 1 pitch. So I'm going to rotate this until it's on the 1, until the edge of this is on the 1. And that's how I know what our slope is. And then I can take one of these hootuses. I call it an angle finder is what I call it. But anyway, you can use this. And then that's how I built this handrail, which you'll see here in a minute. I use this just like I would this when building my handrail to make sure my legs were the proper angle. All right, so once you have this, you might be asking, okay, Austin, how do I know what miter to cut my, you know, what angle to cut my, my rails on? Well, you can take any angle finder, this one, this one, this one here is a digital one. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, although this one here I do like because it shows you, like for example, an easy one will do 90 gives you 90 here then on the back side it gives you the angle of essentially each miter which is a 45 which we uh, I'm not gonna say all of us know but like we all are most likely gonna know a 45 over you know 45 is half of 90 so that's what I always revert back to whenever I'm trying to figure out miters is if I want a 90 degree angle then I know I need to cut each rail pretend this is a rail and this is a leg, like this is the top rail and this is the leg. If it was just a normal rail, we would do a 45. But since we want less than a 90, like so, we need to figure out what that angle is. So, uh, it looks like it's 85 essentially, so we want 40, uh, looks like 42 and a half roughly, 42 and a half roughly is what each miter needs to be. And then you might be asking, okay, how do I take this angle that we figured out and 
convert it to the actual rail. Literally just take it like so. This is how I got my angle on my feet that we'll see here pretty soon whenever I go to put feet on these handrails. Is I just make sure this is lined up right here with the side of the rail. And that's how I know what angle I want my foot to be on because this slope will just do the same thing for our feet and the same thing where we saddle it to our top rail. We want both angles parallel with one another. Parallel just meaning two lines exactly square with one another. This is not parallel. This is parallel. <laughs> what is up, Kev? What is up, my dude? You want to say hi to the viewers? You want to tell them what you've been up to today? Anything worth worth talking about? Huh? Pretty cool today compared to what it has been, huh? All right, we've got all four legs cut for this 12 foot handrail. Had to get a little creative with this cut. Whenever we built this handrail, I just cut a regular 45, but like we've talked about because of the slope, this is uh, acute angle. In other words, it's, you know, it's not a 90, it's more than a 90. So we had to go past 45 on our chop saw. So to do that, I had to get a little creative. I'm sure there's an easier way, but I don't do this all the time. So, so what I did was pull that all the way out because if not, I couldn't go past right here. And I needed to go to this line here. So I couldn't go past here, but I needed to go to like here. So put it on my mark, use this other bolt hole, put a 3 8 bolt down in it pretty far, and then put me a spacer in between that. And then that way this wouldn't push back whenever I tighten my clamp down. Got her all leveled, ready to tack her in place. When I'm building anything in jack stands, I level one piece and then I level this other piece. That way both pieces are in the same plane. I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's nearly impossible to tack two pieces together like this and get them out of the same plane. As long as what you're welding here is all lined up like it's supposed to be. In theory, this piece could be off and this one could be off, but if, if this is lined up correctly, it, it doesn't, really, doesn't really matter with just two pieces. Whenever, where it's gonna matter is whenever you go to put a third piece on. So I hope that makes sense. And if I'm wrong, somebody comment below and let me know. I'm always trying to continuously learn around here. So anyway, one thing I wanted to point out was Anytime I'm putting stuff together without fittings like this, like on square tubing, pipe, whatever, when you cut it with a chop saw, it's real sharp. Well, that's hard to weld, or to me, it's not as good a quality. So I like to put a little bevel on there. That way you got a little place to put your weld because we are gonna be sanding it down. And anytime I sand something down, I like to make sure I've got good penetration. That way uh, there's still enough weld there even though you sand it down because when sanding stuff down, you take a chance of weakening the weld. But anyway, we've got everything ready. All we gotta do is fire this old SA 300 up and uh, put a little old tack on her. Had to make sure I was off Maxine. If you missed the video where we beveled a piece of pipe, piece of 24 inch pipe over there with, a, with our stinger, go check out that video. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I had it way up here, both on Maxine, right here and right here. And uh, so I had to make sure and turn everything back down to weld mode instead of cut mode. Let's fire this thing up. get 
get one tack on it. Check our angle. Go ahead and put another tack on it. All right, now that I've got my foot plates laid out, I got these made with one side straight and the other side just radius, just my personal design because I wanted the, uh, I didn't want the bolt holes to be close to the edge of the concrete, so I moved them over, but anyway, long story short, I wanted the bolts to be away from the edge of the concrete, so I designed this. Well, the straight edge goes down on the bottom so to make it easier to put these on, I'm gonna flip this handrail over. That way I can set my level like so. I'm sure glad we have this uh, shade tree. Because it's like 15 degrees cooler underneath this shade. All right, we got our table set. I just mean unprepared. We got stinger, level, angle finder. I even checked this angle before I got this plate ready. And that angle's a little bit off, so I know I need to tack the side closest to me first. Oh, man. Just when you think you have it all ready. So I'm going to make sure this is level, like so, and then I'm going to put us a tack back here. to the next one. Y'all will never believe what just happened. I tacked all them plates on, you know, I was sharing with you how to, I needed to flip the rail, get it oriented right. Luckily I just got them tacked, but I was wrong, they were tacked on the wrong way. So I just cut them all off, cleaned up all my tacks, and uh, I'd love to tell you that it didn't bother me, you know, but uh, I guess I'm feeling a little irritable today or something, but 
it just uh, it bothered me I was real upset about my little old mistake there uh, not the first time I've made such a mistake I've done that several times in my life more than I care to admit but you know if there's one thing that welding has taught me fabricating specifically that is uh, patience you know Sure enough, patience. Stick welding, specifically, because of that right there. And the uh, whole time I've been cleaning these plates up and thinking about uh, how frustrated I am with myself, I've had some time to cool down. And uh, the silver lining, the one thing that, that I uh, would say to you if you're just getting started and you find yourself making mistakes like such. Think of it, look on the bright side. If you mess up and you gotta redo something, that's just more experience under your belt. Instead of getting experience tacking three of these on, I'm getting experience tacking six of them on. And uh, if I've learned anything over the 15 years of welding, it's, uh, it is the fact that experience is everything, especially, especially when starting out, because you got to have experience before you can uh, offer your skill to somebody. Services, offer your services. people around to help. This is crazy. Now I need to make sure. I think it'll be all right.
And there you have it, handrails are installed. I wanna take this moment to thank my dad for helping me install these handrails and my grandpa, my Papa Ross. For those of you who may not know, he is the one who originated the saying, learn something every day. He told us grandkids that growing up, every day after church, we would go to my grandparents and eat lunch. And whenever we would leave, he would always say, learn something every day. So he was the supervisor while we were installing these handrails for him and my nana, my grandma. And I also wanna thank whoever is going to paint the handrails. My dad bought some white paint, that way the handrails won't be as hot. And I'm not sure if he's gonna do it or if my cousin is gonna do it, I don't know. But thanks for all the help. It feels good to have these handrails up, that way my grandparents can maneuver up and down this ramp to and from their front door from their vehicle a lot safer. The moral to the story is learn from your mistakes. Don't be afraid to fail jump right in on whatever it is that you've been hesitating to do and just essentially plan on failing and learn from those failures and find the silver lining in those failures. A lot of times I try to remind myself whenever I fail on something and I'm beating myself up, I'm like, man, I can't believe I've done that, yada, yada, yada. I try to remember what I gained from that failure because there's always something to gain. You just gotta remind yourself to look at it from that from that perspective, you know. For more helpful resources, check out our website, arosswelding.com. We've got lots of tools lists. We've got digital prints for those of you that are just getting started in the welding industry and you need a way to lift a welding machine or a welding bed or anything else. We've got digital prints of the A-frame that I use quite a bit in my videos, gate jack prints, entrance prints, and several other things over there on our website, arosswelding.com. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate your support. And remember to Learn something every day.